Testing. One, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing again, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing. Check, 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 check.
wait for them to come in. We are about to start. If you could all come through, please. Uh, good morning, all. On behalf of uh, Celia, Ashley, Lynn, Calvin, Christine, we'd like to welcome you here and thank you very much for attending. Um, I know that we have a live stream as well. So thank you all for listening in, um, those of you that are on the live stream. Just before we start, um, to give you a little rundown quickly, um, I'll be reading some messages from friends and family that have been sent in, and then that will be followed by a good friend of Errol's, Jimmy, who will come up and say a few words, followed by Celine, and then Calvin will do the, um, the final eulogy. If I can ask you all, please, just to put your cell phones off, we'll put them on silent. Um, once we're done with the wall, this uh, father will be here at 10 o'clock. Uh, where the mass will begin and uh, the coffin will be brought in and the poor bearers please make yourselves available for that. After the mass um, there will be tea at Discovery Bowling Club. You're all welcome to join us there for some tea and cake and something to eat. Thank you. We're here today to say farewell to a good friend, a father, an uncle, a grandfather, a brother-in-law, um, Errol. And I'd like you all just to take just a moment to close your eyes and just go back and think about the times, the good times that you had with Errol. Just reflect on all those times that he made you laugh, the times that he helped you, or the times that you just sat quietly and comfortable in his presence. So just for a minute, close your eyes and just reflect on those good times you had with Errol. And I'm sure, as you reflect upon this, you can hear Errol's laughter. Because that's everybody, even in the messages I have, the thing that always stands out that everybody mentions was how his laughter was so contagious and how he made everybody feel so good. Now, Errol wasn't perfect, by no means. None of us are. So for all of those that Errol may have offended through his life, for all the people that he might have wronged, for all the people that he might have inadvertently hurt, as we all do. I ask you on behalf of Celia and Errol's family, please to forgive him. So we can just take a moment and forgive Errol for whatever you may think. He could have done wrong to you or wronged you in any way.
We have, Bill was well loved, he was truly loved. I have messages here that have come, as you all know. He has family all over the world. His brothers in Canada, he has sisters in Australia. Of course, there's people from Zimbabwe, family from there as well. So there's some messages that have come in, which I'd like to share with you now. And this one is from Edel's brother, Ronald, and family, and they in Canada. Ronald says, my fondest memory was at Sacred Heart Home, otherwise known as Bushtick to most of us. I invited Edel to go hunting, and being an avid hunter, as you all know he was, he jumped at the chance. We set off into the bush and soon came across a good find. Edel's eyes widened in awe. What are all those, he exclaimed. I wisely replied to him, could you bulls grow that big out here? His reply was, no man, those aren't kudus, those are camels. Errol, your wit and humor was your superpower and kept me entertained. You've been there for me and the family over the years through difficult times and celebrations. You will always be in my heart. I love you, go well, my brother. That was from Ronald. This is a message from uh, Edel's sister Shirley and family, and they are in Australia. My precious brother Edel, when I think of you, I just smile. When I hear about you, I smile. There are no words to describe your loss to us. I was so happy and lucky to be in touch with you almost every day. I will treasure your memories in my heart forever. I love you, my brother. May you rest with the Lord. There's a message here from Errol's brother-in-law, Carlos, who's also in Australia. Errol, my brave brother-in-law, I will never forget you. You made me laugh from the first day I met you. That was your trait, making people laugh. And that's a quality not many people have. May your soul rest in peace. This is a message for Monica, Ted, Deb, Wayne, and family, who are also in Australia. Our dear Celia and beloved family, our most heartfelt thoughts and sentiments we send to you today. We are deeply saddened by the passing of our beloved Errol. His inner strength helped him cope so well with all he dealt with. He will be remembered dearly and with lots of love. He was so special in so many ways. He is now safely at rest in the arms of our Lord forever. Despite the distance today and in the future, we are beside you, all united in spirit. And here's a message here from Mari. Uh, Turby, Charlene, Karen, and Sean, who are also in Australia. Our brother, uncle, and friend, we will miss you, miss your quirky sense of humor, which brought so much laughter. Happiness and laughter in everyone's presence. We would always have hearty laughter. Even though times were tough, we soon forgot our sorrows. Now there's none of that. Our brother, uncle, and best friend, you did your best. Rest in peace in God's heaven. And you will always be remembered at the best of times. Love you always, our brother. There's a message from PC, Carl, Aidan, and Marsha, also in Australia. Today we pay tribute and our last respects to our dear brother, father, and friend Errol. My nickname for Errol was Didi. I'm not sure why I gave him that nickname, but he answered me when I addressed him by it. I'd say, hi, Didi, what's happening? Oh, you so funny, Didi, you always make me laugh. Ah, no, stop it now, Didi. My stomach is aching, and I have no more tears left. His ability to always make everybody laugh was incredible. For my earliest childhood memories, he would stand out 
as the comedian brother. He always looked at the bright, positive, and mainly humorous side of life. My first day at high school, Didi was the one who walked, walked with me from home to the bus depot in 6th Avenue to catch the bus to school. He showed me where the gym was at Founders, where all the Form 1s were to meet on orientation day. He waited for me at the end of the school day as we could get on the bus and go home again. That's how DD was. He made sure I was okay from day one. If mommy chastised him about something serious, you would find this funny side. And mommy would forget and she was cross about it because he would turn the telling off into a big laugh. He always knew how to wrap mommy around his corn curl fingers and his wit and charm. The six of us, Celia, Edel, Sadie, James, Carl, and myself, spent many side splitting laughs, camping trips, picnics, and parties. Just the best times together. One time on a weekend, trip to the falls, we booked one two-bedroom chalet. Money was tight, so someone had to sleep in the kitchen area. Dee Dee decided that drawing cards would be the fairest way to decide our sleeping quarters. Well, the Dussards pulled an ace. Dee Dee politely told him that an ace counts as one. <laughs> Therefore, any other card would be counted higher. The Oliphants, the Garrisons pulled threes and fours two nights in a row. We laughed about it for years after, and we still find it hilarious that Didi was so convincing, and he had the cheek to add more tidbits every time we remembered the story. We'll never forget the Fort Rickson Hippo episode. Didi would say, hey, ask Jimmy. Ask him what happened. Didi, you are just the best brother who found so much joy in making people laugh. You will always be remembered for your kindness, generosity, and wonderful person who always lent a helping hand to anyone who came to you for it. As we bid farewell today, we know we have lost a very special brother amazing father and a lifelong friend. Today is our earthly loss, but it sure is God's heavenly gain. Fly high with the angels, Didi. Mommy, Daddy, Joy, and Desi will be waiting for you. We will miss you always, and memories of you will live in our hearts forever. There's also a message here from Abby. In Philippa in New Zealand. Life is a God-given gift and we need to live it to the fullest in the best way we know how. It's been over 50 years that Errol has been in our lives and that's the greatest gift he has left us with. In his way and with an indomitable spirit, tempered with an infectious love, he forged unforgettable memories that we will treasure and keep close in our hearts. And in saying goodbye, we wash, away, we wash away the tears in the safe knowledge that his soul rests peacefully in God's garden where the stories and laughs will be flowing. Rest well, our brother, till we meet again. And that's from Ebi Philippa and family in New Zealand. We also have a message here from Chile and Tweedy and family in Australia. We spend our lives preparing for death, but when it comes, we are never ready. Similarly, death prepares us for life eternal, where God our Father is ever ready. He has watched each step of life spent on earth, given freedoms, and set a path back to Him. We pray for forgiveness, and we pray for comfort of the heart of Celia. 
Ashley and Daniel, Calvin and Kay, Lynn, Greg, Christine, and all the grandchildren undoubtedly knew of his laughter and charisma. And may the memories you each hold dear bring to you joy in difficult times. And that's from the and Chilean family in New Zealand. We also have a message from Rihanna and family in Bulawaya. Finding the right words to say at times like this is not easy. Expressing our sadness for someone who is not with us anymore is difficult. But the hardest thing is not being with the family during the times of their sorrow. Edel's passing has brought us as a family closer in ways we didn't think were possible. Thinking of all the happy times we spent with him and Celia and all the jokes he told and the things he did that made us laugh have brought back so many happy memories. Edel once came home with a big bag of bird seed one day for the children. And when they asked what it was for, he said that it was for them to eat. So instead of fighting like cats and dogs, they would sing like birds every day. You know, we hope that you are singing with the birds and we know your loved ones will keep you in their hearts. You will be sadly missed. Celia, Ashley, Calvin, Lynn, Christine, Monica, Shirley, Ronald, Jinx, PC, Mari, our health, our heartfelt sympathies are with you always. Love always, and that's from Inayat, Rihanna, and her family. That brings us to the end of our message that we have here. Um, I'm not sure if, if any of you are aware. Daniel, Ashley's husband, is not present here today. He was badly burned on his arm last night, and he's in hospital. I'm sure your thoughts will go out to him, and hopefully he'll recover and be with us soon. Um, I'd like to call on Jimmy now to come up. Is Jimmy here? Oh, there he comes. Uh, good morning, everyone. They say that life has many reasons. And little did we think that I would be called upon to bid farewell to a dear and close friend. We all here today to remember and to honor Ero or Oli, as many of us know him. All of us sitting here have fond memories and time spent with Ero. Ero and I go back many years to when we started hanging around together in Westgate whilst we were still in school. And that goes back like 55 years. It all comes from a large, close-knit family, five sisters, three brothers, and grew up in Bulawayo. Errol and Celia have been married for 47 years and have four lovely children. Ashley, Calvin, Lynn, Christine, and 11 grandchildren. He was always a family man, and he loved, surrounded, loved to be surrounded by his kids. 
and grandkids. He would often seem uh, seen with his little one on his lap, telling them stories. He could capture them for ages. I don't know which one of you kids, but he grabbed one of you and he held you on his lap, told you stories. <laughs> Next thing, you fell asleep, and so did he. He was so engrossed in his stories, you know. Errol had a great sense of humor and would always come up with something quirky, comment or joke that would have everyone in stitches of laughter. He enjoyed the simple things in life. Our memories were picnics and camping trips. Errol's first car was a gray Austin van that would just peter out as we were going along and, would, and he would jump out and fiddle in under the bonnet and away we would be on the road again. Nothing fazed him. Errol enjoyed fishing and hunting after the younger years of snooker and squash. What happy memories we all share in our many trips to Mulabizi and those big fish we used to catch. No one of the, uh, one of the many boys' trips, he came home with the nickname of Bollinger. Need I say more? <laughs> Celia, Celia and Ero were notorious for their timekeeping. I'm sure you guys can all share that with me. Eh? I recall once they were joining Monica and Ted on a fishing trip and they arrived there two days later. <laughs> he just had a style of his own and even with his dance steps, kept Celia on her toes. But they always smiled and kept going. Ero was a very helpful, kind-hearted person. And wherever and wherever he could help someone, he would. He always went that extra mile without a thought of repayment. If someone asked him and had it been given away, he would give it, he'd take his shirt off his back to do something for you. I think the hardest part of Ero was when he lost his limbs. From being an active, hard-working man, he always now restricted to a wheelchair and crutches. In the true Errol spirit, he preserved and got himself mobile whilst maintaining his positive attitude. When I'd phone him, it took a long time to answer. I actually phoned him not last week, Sunday, it's Sunday before, and he didn't answer the phone. And. Uh, he so happened to phone me back, which he always did. And I said to him, I said, Errol, you gotta to run to the phone. He says, man, I don't know this toe of mine. I think I got a little bit of gout in it. <laughs> and uh, he'd laugh and he'd say, hey, Jim, I'm trying. Ero was loved and respected by many and will truly be missed. We will always remember his contagious laugh and that should bring a smile to all our faces. Some friends come into our lives, leave footprints on our hearts. Ero was that type of friend. Our heartfelt sympathies to, to Celia, Ashley, Calvin, Lynn, and Christine, and all the grandchildren and family, near and far. May you find comfort and peace in the wonderful memories you carry in your minds and hearts. Go well, my friend, until we meet again.
where do I start? <laughs> you really think you're going to remove these long wires on my face? That was our last day's conversation we had <laughs> as I was shaping yours and daddy's brows. <laughs> How we laughed because <laughs> you said, be careful, the machine doesn't break. <laughs> and we all just burst into laughter. <laughs> I always thought this day would be easier after all your hospital admissions. <laughs> but it's not. We all knew this time would come. But Grandpa, I'm having trouble except in the fact that you're gone. <laughs> so today is a sad day for me and my family and to all that knew you. I'm going to try and take comfort in knowing that you are resting and no longer in pain. But the truth is, I miss you already more than words can say. I sit and I reminisce how you'd made Mrs. O bake me a whole chocolate cake to myself. We sit in the kitchen and I would just jump right to it. Or how you would make silly jokes in serious situations and we could all just burst out laughing as if we found a problem solving. You used to watch me play for hours, make a house of all your bricks on the side of the house in some memories to last me a lifetime. You touched us all in different ways, and while you were taking your last breath, Riley was catching Ishwas for you because of all the stories you told him and how he used to eat them. But what I'm most grateful for was for the love and acceptance of taking Tanya and I in as your own. The constant guidance and teaching us no matter what life throws at you, you get up and be happy and love each other always. <laughs> Today we say goodbye, Grandpa, and we will carry you and all your teachings in our heart forever. I love you. Actually, hoping everyone will take longer so that I can prepare for this. Um, this is just obviously something from my sister and my heart, um, just about our father. Our father was a kind and hardworking man. Anyone who knew him knew that if you ask my father, he would give. And if you knew him in Bulawayo, you knew he had a guy for everything. He had a plumber guy. He had a roofing guy. He had an electricity guy. He even had a MacGyver guy. Um, that was just his character. His guys would become your guys constantly feeding that chain of friendship that means so much to my dad. As my sisters and I have navigated through this very difficult time, we have been truly humbled by how many lives our father has touched. People from all over the world have reached out to share great stories about my father's ability to connect with people in a genuine way 
with a positive mindset and as everybody knows a witty humor. We all, we all have an Errol joke that will keep him in our memories for many hard days ahead. As our father got older and faced so many health challenges, he still smiled. Exactly the same like in the picture. He still made jokes and he still encouraged us. He still encouraged us to steer our course with purpose and heart. Through it all, he never lost that charisma, the ability to make people laugh and change your mood no matter what. He took any negative situation as a challenge. To get everyone laughing, and he usually won. With everyone in stitches, we knew that he won. His big heart and determination is what has kept him going through all the difficult situations life threw at him. He was a fighter and a great example to all of us. He was a great example to all of us that we should never, ever give up. Instead, embrace it and soldier on. Through thick and thin, and by the same token, not to settle for anything less than we deserve in life. Dad, it wasn't even a month ago that you said soldiers fight. No matter how bad it gets, and when the time comes for that soldier to fall, he goes down with, he doesn't go down without a fight. Even soldiers have to die. Dead, you fought your fight. It's now time for you to eternally rest in peace. Thank you for all that you were to us and for giving us so much to hold in our hearts forever. Dad, we love you. Rest in peace. Um, uh, Father is, is here. He'll be coming through just now and we will commence with the Mass. Um, if I can ask the pallbearers, please, to just walk through so that we can just gather out there. Thank you. May we rise.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, in life, Errol cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, Errol received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Let us prepare ourselves, dear brothers and sisters, to celebrate this sacred mystery by calling to mind our sins and asking for God's forgiveness and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Errol, whom we have called to journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland, to delight in its everlasting joys. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. We may be seated to listen to the word of God. The first reading is from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything beautiful in its time. 
And this is the word of the Lord. Second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brethren, about those who have died, to make sure you do not grieve about them, like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise. And then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. Now with such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer and enter into his glory? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of the disciples of Jesus were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the peoples, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this happened, Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish men, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He appeared to be going further, but they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is now for spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts bend within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven gathered together, and those who were with them who said, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. We may be seated. 
the two disciples were on their way to a mouse a few days after Jesus' death, lost to hope because their hope was in Jesus as they knew, as they taught, and as believed that he was the one to free them or to liberate them from the hands of the Roman who came to invade their country and uh, to colonize them. And as they walked with Jesus for three years while he was on earth, they saw what kind of a master they had. All their hopes were in him, but suddenly he is killed, crucified, dead, and now buried, and so all their hopes went just in vain. And as they were walking on the road to Emmaus, they did not know that the person who met them and who walked with them was Christ himself. And when he asked them, why do you look so sad? Why are you now so distressed? So they were also surprised to say that the event that happened in Jerusalem not long ago went countrywide. So everybody knew what happened in Jerusalem. And you are the only one who doesn't know what happened. And they said, tell me more. But they forgot that it was Christ himself. But when did they come to recognize Christ? It was at the breaking of the bread. And what is the breaking of the bread? That's what we see. It was at the Eucharist. As they celebrated their first Eucharist with Jesus while he was alive on Holy Thursday, now he is celebrating his first Eucharist after the resurrection with his two disciples. And that's where they come to recognize him. You have come here this morning with Carol, your brother, your, sis, your, 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 your father, your uncle, your nephew, your cousin, in the coffin, full of despair, losing your hope. We won't speak to him anymore. We won't talk to him anymore. We won't hear his laughter anymore. There will be no more all those times of joys, full of despair, but the focus this morning and the purpose of bringing the lifeless body of Pharaoh in the church today, the center of our attention is not in this coffin. The center of our attention is on that altar where we shall recognize Christ to whom Pharaoh put his faith. Just like the disciples on their road to Emmaus, their hopes were just threshed and they were just uh, despaired, and uh, their faces, Jesus himself could recognize on them how sad they were, and they asked them, why are you so sad, and what are you talking on the road to your mouth? They could not see him, just like you were coming with the coffin, or even the first day when the news was broken to you that your role is normal. But as you bring your, your faith, you bring your spirituality, you bring your belief, you bring that we are human, yes, we have faith in us together, and then you say, let us go and pray with him for the last time before he goes to his place of rest. And let me remind you, dear brothers and sisters, that can you try to recognize that you still have hope in this Christ that you will find at the breaking of the bread in this altar where we celebrate this Eucharist for the repose of the soul of Errol, that you don't go out of this holy place, despair, distorted, lost, and uh, with your hope being put aside because you can't see him anymore, but rather go full of faith because you have come to recognize the God that he put his faith in, in the breaking of the bread, what we call in the Eucharist. The Eucharist, dear brothers and sisters, is the center of our faith, is the summit of all our belief as Catholics. We have so many other prayers and many other paraliturgies that we can celebrate, but the Mass, the Eucharist, is the center because that's where we recognize Christ. The Mass is the center of our belief, of our faith, because that's where we come to touch Christ in the Eucharist, and that's where the two disciples on their way to Emmaus recognized Christ at the breaking of the, word, the, the bread and that we call the Eucharist. 
as you come morning, as you come said, may you try to recognize Christ to whom Errol put his faith. May you try to found and keep your hope high because as believers, we continue to believe that it is not death that is the end of everything, but rather the beginning of a life everlasting. It is not death that will stop you loving and thinking and looking at the good moment that you spent with Pharaoh while he was in this world because it is only the beginning of a life everlasting. For a person who believed in Christ, for a person who dies in Christ, just like our baptism reminds us as we heard in the second reading, in baptism we die with Christ. Still in baptism we rise with him. And that's the faith into which, which our brother put, and that's the faith into which that he decided to be baptized. And to you, my dear brothers and sisters, let us try to found Christ in this celebration of the Eucharist at the breaking of the bread, so that this Eucharist celebrated or being celebrated in memory and for the repose of the soul of our brother may be the journey for him or the food for him for the journey so that he can meet his Lord that he believed while he was here on earth. Amen. Let us present our praise and petitions to the Almighty God for the repose of the soul of Errol, for the intentions of the family, and for the intentions of all those who lived and loved Errol and lived with him here on earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Errol, who in baptism was given the promise of eternal life, through the love and kindness of God, may he be welcomed into the company of the saints in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Errol, who received the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he will be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, as we mourn the sudden death of our brother, Show us the immense power of your goodness and strengthen our belief that Errol has entered into your presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the family and the friends of Errol that they may seek comfort and consolation in the words of Jesus. We pray that through the course of time their hurt will be healed and they will find peace in the knowing that their loved one is resting safely with the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our loved ones who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of our ancestors in faith, by the covenant made on Mount Sinai, you taught your people to strengthen the bonds of family through faith, honor, and love. Look kindly upon Errol, bring him one day to our heavenly home, where the saints dwell in blessedness and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Errol, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may found in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those who saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, Life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy. Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith save us. Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us ready to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Booty, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Errol Frederick Oliphant, whom we have called from this world to yourself, Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his 
may you also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the mind. For the reception of the Blessed Sacrament, we request that only Catholics may come forward and those Catholics in good standing with their faith.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Errol may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our brother Errol in this show and set and hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurance of faith, until we all meet in Christ, and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God.